Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communications, and how to build strong family bonds through the lens of the principal self-government. And in this video, we're talking about teaching children to honor their family values even when they aren't at home. In this video, we're going to be talking about children remembering their family values even when they're not at home and key things that you can do to help them be more successful at that. We've all been there. We teach our children, okay, you don't say these words, you don't watch these shows, you don't take these substances. There's a lot of don't do's. There's also a lot of do do's. Things like use proper manners or make sure that you show respect to other people. These types of things that are all based on our values, our morals, and our principles. And then the child goes somewhere else and they don't keep the values. And then we go, where did we go wrong? Well, there is something that you can do, and we're gonna be talking about that in this video. First though, I would like to share with you a little story that happened just yesterday. So I was on a little walk around my neighborhood. I, I like to take a little brisk walk every day, get out into the outside, and I'm walking around and I pass by some boys that I know that are playing sports, and they're young boys. They're probably about eight or nine years old and they're just pretending that they're playing football and somebody's the quarterback and they're throwing it and out comes one of the other boys who had not been playing with them yet. He was trying to get them to come and do something that he wanted to do. I was just walking by, seeing what was happening and suddenly they tell him no and then this boy starts yelling after me, hey old lady, Hey, how about you? You know, and he starts telling these things that I thought, this boy comes from a very good family. This boy's family is so respectful, so kind. And with all of his siblings, I've always seen them behave very, very respectful and kind. But I knew he was looking to seek attention for his friend's sake. He wanted their attention by getting me to give him some sort of attention. Of course, I just ignored him and moved on. But I thought to myself, look how any child could fall into a trap. He wanted his friends to give him attention, to do something that he wanted them to do. They didn't want to. So now he started trying some other way to get their attention. And he actually crossed over one of his values lines to do it by yelling things that were unkind and not appropriate at me. I mean, unless there's some other old lady around, but I didn't see anybody else out there. Even just calling me, hey grandma, hey old lady, actually would have been something that I know his parents would have said, oh no, we do not talk to people that way, and they would have corrected him. Just an example of how a child might get tempted to do something that goes against their family values, just to get attention maybe from a friend. So how do you prepare a child then to maintain their family values in all circumstances? Well, one of the best things that you can do is give your child an opportunity to be around other adults so that they can practice having their family values maintained around other adults when you're not there. Grandma and grandpa, aunts and uncles are going to be the best people to practice this with because they know your family and hopefully they already respect your family values. Although I know there's always that little grandma thing where grandma or grandpa might do something just to be nice to a child that they even know goes against family values. But all the more reason that you need to prepare your children to stick up for their family values no matter where they are. So what you do is you start out by having them visit with adults, spending a little bit of time with adults. So those adults are gonna have the interest of the child in mind. It will be easier for your child to maintain their family values there. Then after they're good at maintaining their family values with other adult close friend or family members, then you can start working with them maintaining those family values when you're not there 
with friends. So what that means is that when my child is not ready to maintain their family values with friends, then that means I'm going to be around every time they are with friends. Now I know for some people that might seem like, oh, that's oppressive or maybe even micromanaging, but no, it's just keeping in mind where they're at with their development and what lessons they need to learn in what order. If they haven't learned all the lessons yet, I'm not going to put them in a circumstance where they are going to be tested and they might fail at keeping their family values and then decide that they're actually okay with it. Instead, we're gonna help gradually step them into it so that they feel empowered when they keep their family values instead of feeling like they're not fitting in. So let's go through this step-by-step -step process of what you might do to help your child prepare to hold on to their family values. But first, click the subscribe button. When you subscribe to this channel, you get a lot more content like this, and it's all intended to help you. Subscribe now. So let's talk about this process of preparing a child. Number one thing in the process is you've gotta be very clear about what your family values even are. So often, parents assume the children just understand what the family values are, but they've never actually defined those family values with the children. Well, that leaves the child in the dark. If you want your child to be able to live their family values, they've got to take some ownership in them in the first place. In this book, Parenting a House United, I talk about creating a home culture where parents and children can both learn self-government or mastery over themselves and learn good decision-making, problem-solving, and critical thinking skills. In this book, I talk about certain skills that we teach children. There are four basic skills. They are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. When a person learns those four basic skills, that takes care of 99% of their behavioral problems. Well, when I teach those children those skills, that's just a preparatory step for them to honor all of our family values and morals. So in this book, I talk about creating a family standard. A family standard is a policy or document that the family creates that talks about all the things the family will do and won't do. Words you will say and won't say. Types of movies or music you will listen to or watch and that you won't listen to or watch. Clothing standards, grooming standards, health and nutrition standards, digital and technology standards. These are all part of the family standard that is talked about in here or in my online course, the TSG Parenting Course, which is on teachingselfgovernment.com website. Once you've created your family standard and you've rolled it out with the family, which I talk about how to do in my trainings and courses, then your child is ready to actually maintain the family values and the family standards that you have. So now what you do is you start practicing maintaining those standards with family members and you do this by utilizing a skill that I also teach in my parenting course called pre-teaching. So you prepare the child ahead of time for a circumstance when they might feel tempted to go against one of the family standards. So there's a game that we played when my children were little. We called it the what if game. We would play it when we were riding in a car or something like that. And that what if game, I would say, what if you were playing with a friend and the friend started saying bad words? What would you do? And then they would think about it. Hmm. I would tell my friend, please don't say those words around me because I don't say those words or whatever they picked, right? And we would discuss it together. And you could use any circumstance. As they get older, we do an exercise called a sodas exercise, which is a written or verbal exercise, which again, I share how to do in my course, the TSG Parenting course, which is on teachingselfgovernment.com. In that course, I talk about doing what are called sodas exercises. These sodas exercises help develop the prefrontal cortex and the critical thinking skills to help the child make better decisions in another circumstance that compares to one that they might've just had, or maybe even prepares them for a circumstance they've never had yet. So you could do sodas exercises with your children to help prepare them for times that they might need to stand up for their values, even when other people around them are not doing that. Now this brings me to the type of pre-teaching that happens right in the minute. So the family standard and the sodas exercises, those are all things that you do 
further ahead of time. But right before they go into a new circumstance, you're also going to do some pre-teaching. When you pre-teach a child, what you do is you say, okay, this is the upcoming circumstance. You're going to grandma and grandpa's house, you're going to spend the night. Now at grandma and grandpa's house, they might give you the opportunity to watch a movie. What types of movies do you think you would be able to choose from? They don't know, right? So you'd say, well, it'd have to be one that matches our family standard. And for this weekend, I'm telling you that you can only watch a movie that we have seen before so that I know that it's a movie that is okay and approved for our family standard. So maybe you're gonna give the child the movie to bring and you're gonna say, my mom says I can watch one movie. So then they get in the habit of telling grandma what mom said. And then afterward, you're gonna check up with grandma to see if they told you they could only watch one movie and if they did only watch one movie. And then you're gonna praise them for that afterwards. So you're gonna tell them, hey, I'm gonna ask grandma how it goes and what you told her about your standards. And if you followed your standards, and if the answer was yes, there's gonna be a positive consequence. So that's gonna be exciting. This brings me to the next step in the process, which is after we can do this at grandma's houses or aunts and uncles' houses, now we can move on to friends' houses. First, we're gonna be having the friends come over and you're gonna practice keeping the standards at your own house first, the majority of the time. Then then you can go to a friend's house and before they go to a friend's house you talk about the standards talk about the no answers and the instructions that they need to follow from you when they're at the friend's house another step that I might take if I see my child having a problem is contact the friend's mother and let the friend's mother know the standards so that my child has an easier time accepting the standards when they are at a friend's house then later they are used to always keeping their values and family standards when they're with that friend so if they're in a circumstance when there's no adult around my child's gonna find that it's second nature for them to keep their values and standards even if nobody is there to observe because they've had lots of practice doing it in the first place now this brings me to the last piece of the puzzle which is you want to make sure that you check up with your child after they go places and you want to have regular ongoing conversations with them about their friend relationships their family relationships and their standards and you do this in a special meeting that we call a personal mentor meeting. The parent mentor meeting or that personal mentor meeting with the child is something that you're gonna do each week. And this is something that I also teach about in my Teaching Self-Government or TSG parenting course. That TSG parenting course is a great place for you to start at learning self-government for your children in your family. If you have not taken that TSG parenting course, start today, go to teachingselfgovernment.com. When you go to the, the shopping tab, it's right there. That TSG parenting course is going to give you all the nuts and bolts you need, plus the support, because you get ongoing mentoring, you can ask me questions, and work with certified mentors that I have trained. There are so many resources right at your fingertips, right there on teachingselfgovernment.com. So go to that website and I'll see you more on the course.